to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. So guess what tonight is? Tonight is garden tour night, y'all. And so we are gonna take a tour of the garden in July, in the, what, third week of July. I feel like I missed a garden tour somewhere in here because <laughs> we don't have one for the beginning of July. I don't know. I wanna show y'all something, something y'all know that I wanted so bad and I had so much trouble starting them by the way i am in my work clothes because it's kind of late and i don't want to lose the light today so i just was like i'm going home i'm going to do the garden tour and then i will you know go ahead and edit it and stuff um so i didn't change my clothes or anything y'all look at this leaf on this sunflower by the way that's the sunflower that we found in the compost pile <laughs> um and it just grew and grew and grew it's a volunteer i'm taking off all of these dead looking leaves um, but like that sunflower is huge I, I, and it has multiple heads on it. It's pretty cool. I'm excited. And it's a pretty one. Like there's so many bees on this head. I'm going to see if I can zoom in. You probably won't be able to see it, but I'm going to see. I hope y'all could see it. If you couldn't, I'm sorry. But there's like so many bees on the head of that sunflower. Um, and they are beautiful. I normally cover them to save seeds, but there's literally no way without a without a ladder am I getting up there so I probably won't be able to save the seeds on that one um, I'm totally off track already because this is not what I wanted to show you but we have a few more right there too they're so beautiful and these were all volunteers I did not have a lot of luck with my sunflowers not my seeds not because I can't because I didn't pay attention to them but this is what I wanted to show you my one aster plant that survived has finally started blooming. I think asters are some of the prettiest plants, y'all. Some of the prettiest flowers. Um, like, so those are my asters. And that's my most exciting thing for this garden tour. <laughs> so let's look around. Um, let's start with the bed that I cleaned out in my last video. Um, you're going to be so surprised by it because it looks so much better. Um, I just needed to get it cleaned out. <laughs> so if you remember, this is the bed that had onions, lettuce that had gone to seed, uh, watermelon back here, sunflowers in it. It was just a mess. But look at it. I have cleaned it up. It looks amazing. My butterfly, blue butterfly flower is still moving up the trellis and it looks so healthy. It was awful <laughs> when I put it in here because I didn't take care of it, but I planted it anyway because if you've been here for a while, you know that's what I do. I plant stuff anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that bed is looking much better. The nasturtiums that were down here are pretty much dying out but i didn't pull them the calendula looks the same way it's just stringy and it looks very leggy um but the pepper plants that are in here are still looking good that one over there is a cayenne long and it has all kind of peppers on it just waiting for it to turn colors <laughs> just waiting for them to turn colors and once they turn colors i'm gonna eat them <laughs> All right, where to next? Oh, the roselle that's at the end of this bed. It's looking really good. And I think a couple people said they call it sorrel where they're from, but it's looking good. It has a lot of um, blooms on it. So I'm just waiting for them to open up. There's one over there too. I'm very excited for those. It's my first year growing sorrel. So I'm hopeful that I get to, you know, that they grow well and I get to try them. Uh, good in tea from what I heard. My battery's going dead. I gotta go get one. <laughs> okay, so let's keep looking around. Um, the garden is somewhat dying, but it's okay. It's also still giving, okay? Like some stuff is dying, but some stuff is still giving. So let's let's take a look around, y'all. The, the chickens are over there doing whatever it is they do. Poor little babies. <laughs> They're learning though. <laughs> So back here we have our tomatoes. We got one that's blushing right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it. That's a pineapple. They've also started getting smaller. Um, if you remember, I came through 
and I did a very hard prune on the tomatoes. But if you see, we have some suckers growing um, on these. And so at this point, I'm probably just going to let the suckers grow um, as a way to get more fruit. That one was blushing too. That's one of the white ones. I think it's a white tonsil. And across from these tomatoes are the tomatoes. This one has been here for a while. And look, you can see suckers starting to grow at the top. So I'm gonna leave that there. And we have more suckers growing up. This is where I cut and now there's suckers growing. So I'm gonna see what happens. These are the tomatoes that we transplanted out of the compost pile. So my second round will be coming from those. They look really good. Uh, we got us a blushing one back here. We'll go ahead and take that. That's some kind of paste tomato. I think it's a San Marzano. Yep, San Marzano. So the San Marzano is still growing. I didn't keep this one to one liter because I had never grown it before. So I just wanted to see how it grew. Um, yeah, it grew all right. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, we have another blushing tomato. We're going to take that. Um, we lost one here. There are a few left on the one that I had cut. So I'm still letting them, I'm still letting them uh, ripen. And then I'll take this whole plant out. Then over here, we have some um, Amish paste tomatoes. The flower bed looks so sad. <laughs> This zinnia is trying. It's like the one little lively thing in here. Oh, but look at these. And I don't want to say the wrong name because I get them mixed up. Um, I can't think of the name of it. I want to say it's scabiosa, but it could be gumfrina. I get them mixed up. <laughs> you can tell me which one it is. I think last year I called scabiosa. I called, I called gumfrina scabiosa and everybody was like I've never seen that and I was like oh because it's not that <laughs> but back to the flower bed it looks absolutely dead and things are dying but on the flip side these things have seeds in them yep see the seeds so on the flip side there's seeds in them that I could save. But for now, on this garden tour, we're just going to toss it back into the bed. Right here, we got us a calendula. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> so as things die, they give us what we need to grow them again. Um, when I get around to it, I'm going to attempt to come out here and save these seeds. The ones that haven't already fallen out onto the ground. But I could have volunteers next year. So that's a plus. <laughs> Right here was the butterfly weed or milkweed, whichever one it is. When that opens, it's going to be like all these white fluffy things. They're going to fly everywhere. And if I'm lucky, I'll get a whole bunch of volunteer butterfly weed or milkweed. Um, and then I won't have to plant it next year. I can move it and stuff. But yeah, I'm cool with that. <laughs> the cantaloupe is starting to put out actual cantaloupe, hoping that they were, um, here goes another one right here. I'm hoping that they were pollinated because my daughter really loves cantaloupe. And so if they were pollinated, she'll be super duper happy. We got a lot of cantaloupe last year. I was very proud of our cantaloupe harvest last year. Um, so cross your fingers for me and her. <laughs> Down the middle row, uh, which I believe I forgot to show the last time are the peppers. So these are the peppers that we took out of the beds and we replanted them. They are looking a lot better. They don't look as good as the ones that are, were in the bags from the beginning, but they look a lot better than they did when they were in the beds. So I'm going to let them keep growing. Peppers will keep growing until the first frost. So these peppers will just keep going. I will leave them in the bags until, you know, first frost or if you've been here for a while until I can't take it no more and I want my walkway back. <laughs> so here are a few that were also in the beds. Um, and I like this one had like four peppers on it. They've since ripened. I have uh, harvested them. This one here is looking 
a lot better has a little pepper on it but it's still trying to work um, and down this row there are just a lot of everything and someone said that these look like sugar rush they do but they're not they're habanadas um, not habanera habanadas this one was starting to um, was starting to ripen so I went ahead and grabbed it off of there so I tasted these in the light stage like the yellow stage and they're not hot that's why they're called habanadas um, so no heat <laughs> so I want to taste it in this stage uh, wipe it off a little bit <laughs> let's see very very sweet let's see I feel like if I had left it a little bit longer, it would be a lot sweeter. But it's really good. I'm glad I like them because if I didn't, there's so many on these plants that I wouldn't know what to do with them. It's really good. I'm going to throw the rest of it to the chickens. But it's not hot. Because I don't want habaneros. I mean habaneros. So I had harvested all of the banana peppers. Now they're just starting to grow back again. So this plant will probably be full of banana peppers soon. We have Jimmy Nardello's over here that's just like growing and starting to ripen. Very happy about that because I do love Jimmy Nardello's. I have a lot of these in the house already. And tonight I am planning to cut them up and freeze them because they unfreeze, very, they thaw very well. And I use them like when I cook steaks and all kinds of stuff all the way through the year. And so I always preserve those. I always freeze those. I'm probably going to make some powder out of those this year um, because they are very sweet and very tasty. They have a very good taste to them. So that is the uh, Jimmy Nardello. Beside the Jimmy Nardello, I believe are Poblano. But I went ahead and harvested all of the Poblano peppers the other day. You know what? I have started putting poblano peppers, uh, you know, charred poblano peppers on my bacon and tomato sandwich. Oh my goodness, delicious. Adds some flavor to it. More flavor than it already had. You should try it. I, I, I just kind of cut it in half, put it in a pan, you know, sear it a little bit. Oh, char it. Delicious, y'all. So right here, we have another Jimmy Nardello and there's a bunch growing down at the bottom of this one and there are flowers trying to come in in the heat of the summer sometimes the plants will stop flowering or they will drop flowers um you know it'll start back flowering and producing fruit once it cools down a little bit right here we have some more of the uh cayenne long they're all over this plant just waiting for them to start to to ripen but it's a huge plant right here we have pimentos and I harvested all of them, and we have new ones starting to grow already. How awesome, right? This is the habanada plant. I just took that habanada off, that pepper off. It, it, look at all of them. There are so many, like super prolific plant, y'all. The shishito peppers are still looking good, too. Um, I could probably harvest some of these. Like right here, that one could be harvested. This is another habanada. Lots of peppers on it. Lots and lots of peppers. Pretty big plant too. Look at that. Pretty big plant. And another shishito right there needing to be harvested as well. Um, we have some jalapenos here. And this is another Jimmy Nardello. Um, and then these are different kind on this side. There's really not much to show because they're still trying to bounce back. Um, but still, not nearly as much um, transplant shock as I had expected to see. I'm not sure if I ever showed you all or mentioned it, but these are cucumbers on this trellis that's in the middle. I think the last time, I think I forgot the pepper bags and this whole bed. And so these are cucumbers, surprisingly still growing with a whole bunch of baby cucumbers, hoping that they turn into big cucumbers. <laughs> this one right there. So, 
the rest of the tomatoes. Let's talk about the rest of the tomatoes. I'm gonna grab my basket because I see some blushing tomatoes, blushing tomatoes, onions that have fallen over. There's so much that's still going out here in this garden that looks like it's dying. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think that's another onion right here that needs to be harvested. Yeah, it fell over. Not the biggest, but it'll do for something. All right, so the tomato plants are looking, they looking rough, y'all. <laughs> and that's okay. There's two more in the compost pile. And so I'm gonna pull them out probably this weekend sometime and go ahead and replant them in one of these bags where I lost the tomato. But we got a blushing one. I believe that's a uh, Dr. Weiches. And I noticed this jalapeno had fell off. I probably just did that when I was showing you all. So we'll take that. This is this is a uh, blushing. Let's see. Very pretty tomato. That's a brandywine yellow. Nice size tomato there. It's blushing a little bit, so I'm gonna take it. Got another Dr. Weiches back here. Pretty sure that's what they are. If you don't think they are, you can tell me that. I can't see my tags from over here. Look at that. That's a paste tomato, y'all. It's huge. That's one of the Amish paste tomatoes. <laughs> the bugs. It went up my nose. <laughs> That's another Amish paste right there. That's blushing. So let me step back and show you the tomato plants. They don't look like much, do they? <laughs> But this is the sucker that we pulled off of a plant and just stuck it in a bag. So it's making its way and we got some suckers already growing on it. So I would venture to say it has rooted. <laughs> Grab these weeds. All right, so those are the tomato plants over here. The tops are looking good. We have flowers, new flowers growing. Now what I am concerned about with my trellising method is if tomatoes start to grow at the top, I feel like something's gonna end up snapping. There's no more space. If you have an idea for me, go ahead and give it to me <laughs> on how I might be able to extend this. All right, so we're gonna move on this way and look at the tomatoes over there. They look a little bit rougher. <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit rougher. Pretty sure that's a Cherokee purple. I'll check and make sure. Nope, it is not. It's a black elephant. And so it's blushing. We're gonna take it. My tomatoes fell out my basket, y'all. <laughs> uh, we got one right here. That's got maybe a little bit of, oh no, no, no. That's just something that's like stuck on it. But that looks pretty. Here's another here. Look at that black beauty. It's just done cracked all up, y'all. I'm still gonna leave it and let it ripen. It's, it's still very pretty. Sometimes you gotta see the beauty in things that might not seem to be the best for you. Look at them. I don't have anything for y'all. I got some treats coming from Grub Terra for you, though. I got some treats coming from Grub Terra. Y'all want some of that. It's so funny, y'all, because they, so people say chickens are, you know, they're chickens. They're, these chickens know when I come near that I probably have something for them. They literally follow me. Look, and if I go in the coop area, chasing the baby. <laughs> if I go in the coop area, they would follow me over to the trash cans because they know that's where, oh wow, that thing's big, look. I don't think y'all can see it. They know that's where their treats normally come from, but I ran out of treats, um, and so I got some coming. All right, so those are the other tomatoes. Nothing super exciting to see, except for that the tops still look good. Not this one. <laughs> that one's gonna end up having to come out, but like right here, y'all see that? The tops look good and it's still trying to produce. So I'm not giving up on those tomato plants yet. Unless, of course, they die all the way. And then I'm giving up on the tomato plant. <laughs> all right, look at this. Away potatoes. Like, wow. 
If y'all remember this bed, it was nowhere near as full. It is so pretty to me. It's like super pretty to me. But those are the sweet potatoes. Over here, over the weekend, I harvested a lot of the stuff over here. Um, the bees are still absolutely loving this Anise hyssop. And I put the marshmallow over here because it was a lot taller. It was right there. It was taller and like falling over into the walkway. So I put the, uh, what is that? The lemon balm here now and put the marshmallow over here. One good thing about growing in containers, you can move them when you need to. I, it's one of the things I love about growing containers. Well, not tomatoes if you put them on, <laughs> on the floor to weave then you can't move them. But I, I, that's one of the reasons I love growing in containers. So moving along, look at this zucchini plant, y'all. The leaves are huge. This is literally the best zucchini plant I have ever grown, and I'm very excited. There aren't any zucchinis on it right now. Um, not that have been pollinated, at least. But I do believe that I've gotten, what, like four or five off of them, which is great for me. I don't normally do well with zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, we moved this Swiss chard together. So it's still looking good. It's still trying to grow. The larger leaves, of course, kind of died off. They still have a decent texture to them, feel, but they look horrible. But the new leaves are coming in and they're looking great. Um, beans are still trying to work their way up the trellis. Some of them are making their way on up. Some of them are up. By the way, the bean beetles are here. The bean beetles are here. Across from that big old, that big old uh, zucchini, our straw flowers are sprouting, y'all. I love straw flowers. Those are flowers that will just continue to live. Like you can dry them, you can take them in the house. Like they're just gonna continue to live. Very pretty flowers. If you remember, I didn't do well with flowers this year. So any flower that's popping up in this garden, I'm excited about. And it's not that I didn't do well with them. I just didn't pay attention to them when they were in the greenhouse. And so they all just died. <laughs> Listen, it, it got real, real out here. <laughs> Here's another zucchini plant right here. It's trying. It has some sprouts on it, but it's very small. Um, but I'm leaving it. You never know what can happen. It's got a nice little center. Um, I don't think we have any squash vine borer issues. Unlike this here squash that was my delicasta squash y'all and it's dead and it's got these things <laughs> i'm gonna pull it out probably this weekend but you know it is what it is I, again if you saw my video on saturday I, I don't get too pressed about it um here are our artichokes they're still living i don't think artichokes like the heat very well like that's the new one that's the old one I'm hoping that when it cools off, that will stop looking like that. Y'all, it's hot out here. I don't have the energy that I normally have <laughs> in these videos because it is hot out here, y'all. Um, but I'm still rolling through this garden tour. In the middle bed that I don't know if you all have seen in a garden tour in a while because I keep forgetting it. Um, these are marigolds that I started as opposed to the marigolds that I purchased that I really do think <laughs> are miniature marigolds. Um, the purple basil is flowering and I didn't, I never cut it. Um, it's flowering and also turning green. V very odd. Tell me if you know why. Am I over watering? Is it just too hot? What, why is that purple basil turning green? <laughs> There's also some more basil back here. There's a pepper plant. That's another habanada. Not producing nearly as well as the peppers that's in the bags. I do believe, like I normally say, I'm gonna be growing peppers in bags from here on out. Like I'm not gonna try to grow them in beds. I don't know if it's the soil, I'm not sure what it is, um, or if they're competing. I'm not trying to grow them in beds anymore. Down here, there's more basil also going to flower. I am gonna cut this because I want that to keep growing. Um, that's another one right there that's going to flower, but I'm gonna cut it. Might have already gone to flower if we're honest. Right here though is a pepper plant. It's a golden Marconi that is in this bed and growing peppers. I just don't understand it, y'all. I have gotten quite confused 
<laughs> by my peppers this year. I have no idea what's going on with them. And the blueberries are still covered. And they actually still have blueberries on them. <laughs> Look, there's still blueberries on them. I believe I'm probably gonna uncover and let the birds have them. I don't know how many times I could tell y'all how sweet these blueberries are. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't ever, I don't think I ever tasted blueberries this sweet. Even in my garden, because normally the birds get them. And earlier this year, apparently I was picking them too early. You learn something every year. You learn something all the time. So next year I know, like, I really need to leave them and let them ripen well before I pick them. But there's still so many on the plants. So, so many. Garden snack. <laughs> yeah. Just delicious and tasty garden snack. But yeah, I think I'm going to uncover them and share with the birds. It's a lot of small ones that's left anyway. So, I'm going to let the birds have them. <laughs> As from the blueberries, surprisingly, the nasturtiums are still growing all into the walkway. I got to step over them. But the ones down there, not so much. But this patch right here is still growing. My eggplant look just as sad, y'all. <laughs> I mean sad. It is growing eggplant, but it look just terribly sad. And it's fine. <laughs> the strawberries are looking good. And I will tell you, I did get a second flush of strawberries. Something else ate them though, because I did not pick them. <laughs> but look how good they look, y'all. And they still flower and still putting out little, you know, strawberries. So I'm just letting them do what they do. At the end of the season, though, I'm going to thin this a lot. Also get them out of the bed over there because they're trying to take over the bed. Strawberries like to take over. They, they really do. They will take over. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I saw this this morning when I was watering. There's a whole bunch of beans in here that need to be picked. I almost forgot about that before. I um, walked over here, a whole lot of beans. Look how pretty, I love the yellow beans. There is purple beans in here. There's beans that definitely need to be picked, but because the plants were so big, I didn't see them. And when I was watering this morning, I found them. So we're gonna, we're gonna harvest those later. And when I say we, I'm gonna do it myself. Beside those beans, that's a marigold. I'm not sure if it's one that I grew myself or not, but I think it is. Other than that, it would be this size. <laughs> Baby marigold. Big marigold. I love it. <laughs> oh my God, y'all. These cherry tomatoes are the bane of my existence this year. <laughs> they did not do well at all. Like, I planted them here last year, too, and it didn't do that well last year. I am definitely not planting them here next year. They will go somewhere else. Uh, we'll figure out where. It won't be that bad. It's a crop rotation. So it's possible that whatever ailed them last year, ailed them this year. <laughs> but I'm just letting what grow, what will grow, grow. What doesn't, I'm just not. By the way, say hello to Isis Candy Apple number two. It is gone. <laughs> I don't think I got to taste those. Uh, we'll try again next year though, but you can also say goodbye to black cherry number one. <laughs> There's a few tomatoes on it. I'm trying to let ripen. Like that one is molded. My cherry tomatoes did awful. And I didn't plant a lot of them because cherry tomatoes, you know, produce so many tomatoes that I didn't need a lot of them. I wanted more slicers for one. I wanted to be able to preserve them for two. I really wanted to share this year. I wanted to share with people like the taste of homegrown fresh tomatoes. And so people don't really want a lot of cherry tomatoes. People love to get slices. And so that's what I grew a lot of. So I only grew a few cherry. And the only one that's really still, well, no, there's three. The um, Brad's Atomic Grape is still living. However, not still producing. Although that one looks like it's ready. Let's see. It's pretty, doesn't it? We're gonna eat it. Mm. I love a Brad's Atomic Grape. 
I know some people don't. It has a very thick skin. But I absolutely love it. The sun gold is still surviving. Although the top of this one does not look good. But there's others that still survive and still has flowers on it. It looks okay. And then the sun peach down here is doing good. So I am getting some. I did not get as many as I would like. <laughs> there's basil in this bed too. And this one looks so good compared to the ones that's like out in the sun with no shade. It looks good. The purple one is also turning green. I don't know. There's another purple one right here. It's also turning green. So, in July, this is what's happening in my garden. <laughs> one thing that's happening though, and it doesn't look like it, but the loofah is starting to fill out the trellis. So I can tell the difference. You may not be able to, but it's starting to fill out the trellis. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's two plants. Also, the passion fruit is starting to fill out a little bit, not a lot, but like this is a side shoot off of the main vine. And then there are others that are starting to do the same. So I think with the heat, both of those plants are starting to, you know, ramp up and I'm excited because I'm very hopeful to see this entrance filled up by the end of summer. Then you have the Trombonsino squash that is starting to do its thing coming on up the trellis. It's the one on this side. And then there's two on this side. This one wants to lay down and grow roots. And I've been doing my best to keep it up because I want it to go up the trellis. I want both of these trellises to be full of greenery and full of vegetables. <laughs> and I started my Trombocino squash pretty late, which is why it's still pretty small. And when I say started, I direct sowed. That was a successful direct sowing, y'all. You know I don't do that well. So very proud of myself on that. So let's get to these last two beds that are giving me a fit, okay? I do not know what is going on with this soil. What I will say I noticed is humps in the soil. And so I know I have a vole. I don't think it's a mole. I think it's a vole. And I do think that may be what's going on with these beds. The mole is going through it, the vole. The vole is going through it and it's making it hard for the plants to grow, which is fine. You know, it is what it is. We're not gonna worry about it this year. Um, again, did fine in the fall, but this year it is really, it's really getting me this year. But on the flip side of that, those beans that we planted together, they have started to grow. It's those last two, or I think it's two or three rows back here. Um, pretty much all of the basil in this bed is going to seed. I'm not too much worried about it. The zinnias are starting to flower. So I'm excited about that. Look at the little bee sitting on that flower. So that's what we're looking like in this bed. The snapdragons, it's too hot for them, but there are seed pods. So when I start seeds for fall, I will start some seeds for snapdragons with these seeds. I'm going to show you. You see them? All of those seeds. So I'm throwing them in the bed because maybe I can get some volunteers next year. Um, but yeah, I'm going to save those seeds because I do like snapdragons. I'd like to have a lot more of them. There's a lot of seed pods on these plants. This calendula is still looking beautiful. It's still growing really well. It's a pretty big calendula plant too. These are the ones I'm not pulling because I just think they're so pretty. I'm pulling the regular looking ones. These, I'm letting the birds enjoy them and the bees enjoy them. And I'm enjoying looking at them. <laughs> the leeks are looking better. Someone told me just to like make sure I water them well. And that's what I've been doing. And so they are looking good. Um, someone mentioned it in one of my comments and so that's what I've been doing and they're starting to look really good So I'm hopeful that I grow those leeks this year and I can finally taste leeks And thank you all for telling me like that They do taste a little bit like onion and giving me some recipes like I'm planning to well not recipes per se Like y'all didn't give me every ingredient But I will you know google it and make something with them because I'm very excited to try them this watermelon that self sowed itself in this hole, it's still growing. Not nearly as long as the watermelon that I have over in that bed, 
but it's still growing and I'm gonna leave it. Is it too late for me to actually get watermelon if I don't have any watermelon yet? <laughs> Over here, we got this other bed that, you know, these beans are growing. Planted beans here, not a bean came up. The thing is, there's still time, so I will replant those beans. <laughs> I, I have no idea what's going on with my beds this year, but I'm okay with it, you know? It is, it is okay. <laughs> this bean trellis is looking immaculate. Well, there's some yellow leaves, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but I've gotten quite a few beans off of this. It looks really good. And the bean beetles are not over here as much but they are over here i just knock them off and keep it moving um you're not new here you know i'm not a sprayer so i knock the bean beetles off and I keep it moving huh a bean look at that i didn't see that when i came through also a flower <laughs> is all right these are pretty purple potted pole beans y'all so listen that board's got to come out of there. I did not get it done over the weekend when I said I would. So we are hopeful to get it done this weekend. It's got to come out. And I have a borage over here that I could replace it with. It's in a bag right now. It was a volunteer. I moved out of the ginger bag. Oh, the ginger, by the way. I moved that out of the ginger bag and put it over there because I didn't want it to stop the ginger from being able to grow. So I'm going to probably take that out of the bag and put it in there because I thought it was so pretty right there. So before we get to the ginger, let's talk about this wild asparagus that is growing. New asparagus. I missed that one, but there's like two new ones there. There's one back there that's growing. So the asparagus is still growing and I actually ate three of them the other night with my dinner and they were delicious. So look, this ginger has definitely made a comeback, y'all. So this was the one that I put in and it died during transplant, but it sprouted again over there and in this bag too. This is the one that died, but it sprouted more. This tomato plant needs to go where it belongs and not on the ground. Lots of tomato on there though. The roselle over here is looking good too. This isn't one of the beds that's not, you know, growing things well. This roselle is growing well though. So I'm happy about that. I need to tie that asparagus back up again. It's flopped over because it's getting taller and I can cut it. Someone told me I could cut it and I'd be fine. I just haven't. Um, so there's more tomatoes in front of that borage that we trimmed very well, did a, no, a big trim, but there's also flowers. So, nothing wrong with it. Although back here, those aren't looking that the best. I'll probably end up cutting this one out, and I think this is all one plant. The yellow and dying portions, I think it's all one plant. So that is the garden tour tonight. I'm gonna take you with me to take care of these chickens really quick. Totally forgot to show y'all the, um, the orchard area we're not going in there y'all we're, we're not going in there we'll do uh we'll do a look from back here all of the peaches are gone full transparency they were overripe it was my first time actually growing peaches and so i was thinking they needed to get like really red no really red means overripe <laughs> and so full transparency we ate a few but a few also uh, rotted on the table. So it is what it is. But the plants, the trees are looking amazing, but we're probably going to cut them down soon. I do do summer pruning. That's the apple tree. And like this one doesn't look so bad with the rust, but the one over here does. So when I prune this, I'm gonna prune the leaves down, but uh, with the branches. I'm gonna prune the branches down, but I'm also gonna pull off all of these leaves. Um, the oregano under that tree, we cut it last weekend. Uh, it still looks huge. <laughs> and the comfrey, we need to start cutting that and putting it in some water. It's comfrey all over there too. Um, and putting it in some water to make some more comfrey fertilizer. Over here, you still have some more oregano, some more comfrey. There's some sage that I didn't harvest. I harvested the sage over there. 
um, this right here is parsley that went to seed and I never like got it out. And then you got the raspberry bush, which I think is not being watered well enough because the tips of some of them are dying. So we'll see what happens there. It's going on here too. And then there's also a beetle. So who knows? And there are the roses. We did get another flush of roses. Those have already died. These ones we still have. Back here are the potatoes that volunteered on their own. They had flowered. Well, that last flower just failed. So we're kind of just waiting for it to die back to see what we got from that volunteer. And now let's go look in the greenhouse. <laughs> you guys will be seeing this with me because I have not been in here. <laughs> Look at that. There's a tomato in here ready to go. How nice. And they're looking really good compared to how they look when we first put them in here. They're skinny, but they look real good, y'all. And there's no ants in here. So spraying it down worked well. Just so you can see. Lots of spider webs. I have not been in here. I really haven't. Oh, the onions. Need to take those in the house. We put these out here a while ago. They need to go in the house, in the bag in the house. But it's looking good in here. And I'm very proud of these. So if I haven't been in here, you know I haven't watered, right? <laughs> that is, I'm assuming, the fact that I put good and new soil in that bed. Because I have not been in here. And there's flowers on those tomato plants too. So that'll be a second wave of tomato plants for me too. So... I hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna go ahead um, and take care of these chickens real quick. I'm pretty sure I got everything this week. Take care of the chickens and then we're going in the house because it's hot out here. <laughs> Gotta change the shoes. I was fine to walk around the garden in the shoes, but we're not going in the chicken coop in the work shoes. <laughs> the mosquitoes ate my ankles up, y'all. They got me today. They got my ankles. I don't normally struggle with uh, the bugs, but they ate my little ankles and feet up <laughs> tonight. Oh, it's all right. We'll put these boots on, take care of the chicken and the quail, and then we're going in the house where it should be cool. My AC went out again. The coil needs to be replaced. So my stepfather just left tomorrow. He should be coming with the coil he had to order it and he had to wait for it unfortunately and it is hot in my house <laughs> but it should be cooling down let's go take care of the chickens so this was like a harvest video it's gonna be a chicken video it's like an all-in-one my energy won't have though because i'm hot so i hope y'all can forgive me for that <laughs> because it is like just hot out here and we got a Nice little harvest tonight. See? Very nice harvest tonight. If you're in a small space, I know we see people like with these huge harvests and it's like, oh my goodness, I want that. But over periods of day, days, you get that. So grow you a garden girl or guy. Just grow a garden, okay? It's exciting. <laughs> what up? What do you do? I'm coming in. Hello, Bertha Betty. Peace, how's it going? Did y'all give me any eggs today? Uh-oh, watch out, girl. You almost got taken out. Did you give me any eggs? Did you give me eggs today? Okie dokie. Don't you peck me. Let's see. Hey, girls. How are y'all? How are y'all? Y'all don't want to be bothered. Got it. Oh, look at that. Three. Oh, wow. We need to get in here and clean. Like, we need to clean. Really clean. All right, we got three eggs, y'all.
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye, y'all.